So welcome. Today's video I'm extremely excited about. It's been a huge and popular request from viewers over the last, well, probably month and a half, two months. Two Delta Pros. Can we run a central AC unit? Can we run a big 240 volt well pump? What about a dryer? So we're not going to go into a big review and over all the specs and stuff today. We've already did that on the channel. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to see all the specs on these units. But to my surprise, I reached out to EcoFlow and said, hey, would you be willing to send me another Delta Pro so I can link up two together and try out your dual voltage hub and actually combine these for 240 volts? So I did not get paid for this review, but yes, I get a very nice and very expensive unit out of the deal. Regardless of that, I don't care. We're going to get you honest information because well these things are expensive and let's make for sure you're spending your money on something that you want we'll go over the good and the bad if they trip out if they don't run certain things we'll let you know if they do we're going to let you know that as well so let's see what these things will do all right so here we are in my pantry sorry it's a cramped recording space but this is where i set an area up and if you look over here behind me i have put a 50 amp generator plug in you only need 30 amps for these two particular units but i have no idea what i'll get into in the future by the way, if you'd like to see how to install one of those generator inlet boxes, I have a video I'll put down in the description and at the end of this one, if you're watching on YouTube, where I show the full installation process. So if you purchase a second EcoFlow Delta Pro, you can purchase what's called their dual voltage hub. You can see we have two large cables here and on the front of this dual voltage hub, you have two 20 amp, 250 volt outlets here if you use this particular style. Or what we're all used to is this 30 amp twist lock outlet right here. This is like an L1430. This is typically what you see on most of your mid-sized generators. That's what we're gonna be using today. EcoFlow also on their website sells the main cable that plugs into this, the generator cable you're gonna see me use here in just a second. So you can purchase all that from there. By the way, I'll have links down in the description if you wanna go check that out. That is the only way that I earn income off of this set up right here. It's an affiliate link. So the good news about that link is it doesn't cost you a dime extra and we get a small kickback to help support the channel and install and shoot and record content like this. So on the sides of these units right here, I'll show you a close up in just a second. I believe they refer to these as the infinity port. And let's go ahead and power both the units on. This is my first time doing this, by the way. I was waiting for y'all. And let's see if it just goes ahead and recognizes. I do see a little emblem that popped up here and I've never seen that before. So it looks like it recognizes that they're both working together for split phase 120 or what we refer to as 240 volt operation. All right, so now I'm gonna put this twist lock plug down into the dual voltage hub, twist it to the right to lock it in. And I have an adapter down here on the end of this cable to convert to my 50 amp inlet box. Otherwise, this would be the particular plug that you'd be using for your standard 30 amp generator inlet box. All right, so if we take a quick look at the setup here, there is the cable in the dual voltage hub over to my generator inlet box. That's the beautiful thing about this system. I can do this inside because there's no emissions here with the batteries. Both units are powered up and there is the little symbol on both units that shows they are working in conjunction with each other. All right, and to verify the voltage, currently sitting idle, 239 volts. So I'd say yes, that is very close to the 240 I was looking for. This is my generator inlet right here, and I have what's called an interlock. By the way, I have a video on the channel showing how to do this. That makes your system nice and legal. So what this essentially means is I cannot throw generator power on and powering up this main panel until I throw my main power off. And then this slides out of the way. This interlock right here keeps one or the other on. It does not allow both on. All right, so let's go ahead and throw the main power off. I don't have much running, so we'll swap over to generator power here. Just as is. You hear the units really kicking in. Now the fans are on. And let's take a quick look at the type of power draw that we're going to see. Keep in mind, these units are on two different phases in the box. So what that means is because this is split phase 120, well, every other breaker is on a different phase in a the box. There's two phases of 120 volts coming in from outside. Just like there's two 120 volt phases now coming in to the main panel. So if I were to run a system like this a lot, I would do what's called balancing my phases even more. You can see this unit right here is putting out 170 watts, whereas this one's only putting out 76. Most likely, this one's running the side of the panel that has like say a freezer or refrigerator on it. This side may just be running the lights in this room. 
a fan and a few other things in the house. But overall, those are relatively close together. So now the real question, the one I'm most excited about, let's dive right into it. Can I run a central AC unit, the actual AC, this is Florida, that's what we're most concerned about. Hurricane state, if anything, we're gonna lose power because of a hurricane that came through and it's gonna be hot. Can we run an actual whole house AC system off of, well, the units that are in there? I don't know. I will say we're actually about to have a full discussion on this. I do have what's called soft start. I added that as an extra feature to my AC unit. A lot of y'all probably already have that. Think of it as almost a little computer controlled device that tones down, drops voltage, and latches on and smooths out the inrush current coming in once a compressor starts up, a hard starting compressor on freezers, refrigerators, HVAC units. Well, that's what typically will trip a unit. That soft start helps smooth all that out. Now I've got some really cool ones that are actually built into a cord that I'm gonna show you. I've never seen anything quite like it for applications like this. So that is gonna help my starting up here, as well as we have an extremely efficient house here. We did full spray foam insulation, and I only have a two ton AC, but I'll look up some specs on say some three and a half and four ton ones, and we'll go over some of that in just a minute to see if we could potentially start those with this type of unit. All right, so I've got a camera set up in there pointed at the unit, so let's kick this on and see if we go into overload, if it runs, and let's see how much power we're actually pulling. Fingers crossed this worked. I think this is gonna be one of the bigger tests of the day, but I really don't know. Lights flickered, the AC is running. So check that out. This is not pulling anywhere near what I thought it was going to. And look how consistent the phases are. That's great. We must have had something like this drop off of this one right here. So we're pulling less than 2000 watts. Keep in mind I have lights on, fans running, refrigerators plugged in. I think we're probably only pulling 16, 1700 watts, maybe 1700 to run my entire two ton AC system. And at this rate, well, we could run the AC for three hours. And as you can see, cool is on. We'll go outside, listen to the system, make sure nothing seems odd. I am absolutely blown away. This unit's not pulling any more power than it is. I thought we were gonna be like four or 5,000 watts. So it's running, everything sounds perfectly normal. I love testing and doing stuff like this. That was a great result. All right, so some quick math. I'm looking online. Keep in mind we have 30 amps of capacity here and we should be right at it with the amount of watts we're talking. A four ton unit, keep in mind I only have a two ton, in the SEER rating that I run, the more efficient, the higher SEER rating of your particular unit, usually the lower amps. But we're talking around 17 amps. Nothing, almost half of what these particular units are capable of. Keep in mind, the majority of the surge is that inrush current right when the compressor starts. Soft start really helps you there. We're, we're gonna discuss that later. My two ton, it's showing around eight and a half amps. If I remember correctly, whenever I sized my breaker for it, when I was looking on the actual paper upstairs, it was telling me around 12 amps. I'm sure that's the initial surge and kind of the highest draw that you're gonna see. So this unit should be more than capable, especially if you add soft start to run multiple ton size units. You're just not gonna be able to run as long as I can. But again, if your house is relatively efficient, you're not talking about just kicking this on or running it for hours and hours and hours. The one thing I really wanna caution you on do not use a unit like this to heat a home. Heat pump, okay, that uses the actual compressor of the unit. It's the heat strips, which is what you typically refer to as your emergency backup that pulls a lot of power. I have a 5,000 watt heat strip upstairs. I've never run it and we just had record cold here in Florida. So we were talking right at single digit days here now with the wind chill and I have found my heat pump unit alone, which pulls far less power than using the emergency heat strips, would, there's no doubt it would run off of this and I could even heat my home with this because it's using the same compressor that it uses for cooling. It just uses a different method. All right, what I consider to probably be the highest draw appliance, at least we're personally gonna have in our home, is an electric dryer. This right here should pull thousands of watts. So I'm about to put it on a heating cycle, kick it on. This is probably gonna be the ultimate test for these units. Let's see, I have another camera set up in there watching the wattage pull. I'm expecting five to 6,000 watts out of this. It's really gonna tax the unit. 
I don't know if it would kick it on or not. And yes, I know, if we're in a true emergency situation or outage, we're gonna skip around the closing side. If it's an extended outage, well, guess what? We'll either do it during the day when we have solar panels recharging the units or just hang our clothes on a clothesline. All right, it's running. Let's go take a look at the power. All right, the units, yes, they have wound up. They are kicking. Look at this right here. So this is probably as loud as I've ever heard the fans, which is expected. They're pumping out tons of power. 2,900 watts there, 2,700 watts there. So you're talking well over 5,000 watts that we just added to the current draw that we already had by running that dryer. And that is an insane amount of power. So you could see we could run the dryer for one hour. Now with that said, don't run your dryer during an emergency outage. What's the point? The clothes can wait. All right, so the last big test, can we run a one and a half horsepower, 240 volt deep well pump? Our well pump is around 140 feet deep, so it has a lot of head pressure on it. It has to overcome. It's gonna have a lot of surge starting up. I also have a soft start. I may have a hard start capacitor on that. They work somewhat similar, but they are a little different. Regardless, those both help that initial surge and start up but I have no idea what to expect. Your typical home is probably gonna have a one horsepower deep well. I upped mine to one and a half, a relatively large one, because well, we do a lot of gardening here, running sprinklers and other things, and I thought I wanted the extra capacity. So let's see if these will start that. So the good news is we're already seeing in the event of a major power outage, hurricane hits, we can have these inside. I don't have to go outside. I don't have to get wet. I don't have to start a generator. And well, if we wanted to, we could do laundry, although we're gonna skip that. We can run our whole house AC. Yes, that's what I really wanna know. But the most important thing, and the one thing I miss more than anything without a doubt during a power outage is a nice hot shower. Luckily for us, we have a propane water heater here. So all it needs is a small spark to start it. Propane obviously doesn't use any power. We're good to go there. I just need to make sure we can run a one and a half horse well pump off and on. Let's find that out. All right, here is the well test. Let's turn both of these on. See, we're pulling 150 watts over there, 67 here. Let's go turn some water on and see what these shoot up to when the well pump kicks on. Sure hope this works. If it does, I am in business for an outage. Can take showers, can run AC, and anything else in the house that I want. All right, just kicked on. Yes, I seen a flicker in the lights. And let's take a look here at power. 1500 watts on either side. We're pulling a little over 3000 total, and we have to take off close to 300 watts there. So about 2700 watts to run a one and a half horsepower deep well pump. But it started it with no problems. That's awesome. That is so awesome. All right, it just kicked off. It literally only ran for probably 15 seconds. So you're not talking much power use at all to run a pump. So y'all, realistically, what I'm seeing here is with those two units, I think our house is so efficient. I've done did a lot of testing on the house. I think I could run all night long. Now I wouldn't want to be running the AC off and on all night long, which we do because we have our bedroom zoned out as a second zone and we run it quite cold at night. But in the event of a power outage, we don't have to do that. But as far as this well pump, well, it, yeah, it pulls what, 2,700 watts, but literally for 15 seconds. So as long as I'm not out here running a sprinkler and water in the yard, which I'm not going to do in a power outage, I could take all the showers I want. It's just not going to do much of nothing. And as for the dryer, by far the most power hungry device on this property it looks like well we'll just hang clothes outside if we're in a multi-week outage or we'll wait till we have the sun kicking like this and our solar panels over there which we're about to double up by the way get a ton of power uh we'll just do laundry whenever we're pulling in you know 2,000 3,000 watts of solar energy and we know we can charge them right back up before nightfall. So we're gonna run some water and I wanna hear this pump kick on one more time just to make sure nothing seems odd or unusual. All right, we're on. That all sounds perfectly normal to me. 
so I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing here. And this unit's already done impress me. Just a single one, I've been able to run welders, plasma cutters, some of the most powerful things you can imagine. So two of them together, while they can't run everything at once, if you're a smart homeowner and you're looking for something for, well, backup power, emergency power, or you're taking something smaller off grid, like say a shop, a small cabin, I don't see why on earth you couldn't run just about anything you wanted with this. You just gotta be smart if you're gonna run a large device, like say a dryer. Just don't run much else in the house whenever you do that. As far as, well, say a split unit AC, a mini split, things like that, that are very efficient. Um, even, you know, my two-ton AC, I could still go run some other pretty serious stuff in the house. Now you can either use devices like this to charge up, to get ready for power outages. The grid goes down for whatever reason, we're all experiencing stuff storms, blackouts, whatever it may be, charge these up, put them in your closet, put them out in your garage, or you can do like I'm doing, about to build a pretty serious solar system. And then you can actually run these, well, around the clock because it's a plug and play system. It's got everything in it, batteries, charge controller, inverter. It's all as simple as can be. Add solar panels and well, just continue to run it. It doesn't have to be just for backup. FYI, I've been running one for about a month and a half straight out in my shop, just running a all my 120 volt circuits, I'm talking 24 seven around the clock, hasn't cut off once, hasn't overheated, no overloads, nothing. I have run out of power a couple of times with some rainy and cloudy days, I had to swap back over to grid power. With two of these out there now, uh, I could probably go a couple of days before I'd have to get really worried about, I need the sun to come out. Otherwise again, flip right back to grid power and we're good to go. I'm curious about running these in my shop now, taking it off grid and seeing how much power it saves me, how much money every single month and what all I can actually do with it. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the test. That was just a quick test of the major things I could think to try. Y'all have been asking and asking and asking, especially about the well pump. And the number one request was a central AC. Well, I can run my AC, a two ton, no problem. And looking at the specs online, I don't see why you couldn't run one twice the size of mine. Just make sure you get one of those soft starts or a hard start capacitor. Again, we're going to have a video coming up talking about that because I think that's some very important stuff that a lot of people are overlooking for a little bit of money. Well, no matter what kind of generator you have, gas, a power station like this, anything, soft start makes a huge difference on that inrush and that surge to your unit. Out in that shop right there, I'm finishing up a solar build room, a solar equipment room, where we can do a lot more tests like this, truly run stuff around the clock. So we're gonna have some of that coming and we have a lot more fun things planned. Catch you on the next video.